tell us a little bit about this case that you guys have filed against the New Mexico governor. What are the what's the claims you brought? What are the basics of this case? Sure. So the New Mexico governor issued uh, that executive order. And as a result of that, uh, the health secretary issued an order which banned carry. Uh, and it was a direct result of the, the governor's executive order. Um, and that just flat out doesn't comport with the, the Second Amendment and the, the right to bear arms, uh, particularly if you look post Bruin and what the Supreme Court has said. Um, it just there's no way you can possibly square the two. And so the uh, order that was issued was for a limited time basis. It was for 30 days. Uh, but that still doesn't mean that there isn't, uh, in fact, like a constitutional injury that occurs just because it expires, you know, in a theoretically a, a short temporal period of time versus a, a law that could be there forever, if you will. Um, and so that was why you saw all these lawsuits, you know, ours and any other, I think, five current ones, um, and why they all sought temporary restraining orders um, because you're looking for quick relief from the court and you're not looking for something to, uh, you know, take a little bit more time to get that relief, particularly given the the short nature of that order. Mm, right. I think they're up to six now. I believe the NRA has filed one alongside a lot of the uh, elected Republicans in New Hampshire or sorry, in New Mexico as well. Sure. And uh, so, there, yeah, there's been a ton of action on this. And. Um, yeah, so what's the latest in the case? It's the, you guys have been able to secure that temporary restraining order, correct? Yes. So we, along with everyone else in those five, the five lawsuits, uh, there was a hearing for the temporary restraining order uh, about two days ago, I think now. Uh, the judge granted the TRO from the bench uh, and with a, a very limited written opinion that followed it. Um, that just kind of covered the very basics of, yeah, I think there's enough here to, to grant this and kind of keep the status quo of people which should be able to exercise their right uh, with a uh, hearing for the preliminary injunction to follow on, I believe, October 3rd, uh, at which point the TRO will expire. And then it'll just be a question as to whether or not he finds that, yeah, OK, I'm going to preliminary and join this uh, and more or less continue this restraining order against the governor while the case is litigated. Mm, right. And your arguments in this case were uh, basically that this order just straight up violates the Second Amendment. Now, the governor has argued essentially that, you know, the Second Amendment is not unlimited, uh, that even her oath of office is not unlimited, apparently, uh, and that she because she issued this emergency order that gives her the authority to sort of infringe upon the right to to keep and bear arms. What is the 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 counter to that argument that these emergency powers enable her for a temporary period to to do this well it, it just doesn't flat out square with what the constitution says you know there's if you look at the emergency powers um that were enacted uh you know after post katrina uh there were instances of you know rights being restricted as far as uh confiscation and also limits on people carrying in courts found that that was not permissible to do um, her usage of a public health emergency to to try to square this is is not something that you know passes constitutional muster. And you, you more importantly, if you look at what the Supreme Court has said, like you, first if you just look at the plain text of the Second Amendment, right? There's a right to bear arms. Now, if you look at the case law that's evolved from that, um, courts have said, okay you have a right to bear arms and that right could be open carry or it could be concealed carry. And if the state restricts one or makes it more difficult to um, utilize one over the other, that that kind of squares with the Constitution because you still have the ability to do it. It just may not be the preference, your, your manner of preference. Um, so if concealed carry is restricted, but open carry is allowed, you may not prefer open carry, but you still have the, the ability to carry an arm for self-defense. If you look at what Bruin said, it's like, yeah, you have a right to bear arms in public. And not only do you have that right to bear arms, the places in which the government can restrict that right is is limited. And they they specifically enumerated three places that were, you know, legislative assemblies, polling places, courthouses. Uh, and they said that there's a common theme be behind all of those, you know, and that's that there's comprehensive state provided security. So. When you just take that and you go, cool, we're going to ban carry and we're going to ban carry literally everywhere uh, in this county or in this city based on something else. It just it doesn't square with what the Constitution requires. And uh, yeah, that's the basis for all of this. I, I don't think that the Supreme Court has weighed in on you know emergency powers and 
the ability to restrict gun rights in those circumstances. I know we had some cases, uh, I mean, obviously you, you talked about Katrina and the aftermath of that. And then there were also a couple, obviously, cases out of the COVID pandemic where they shut down gun stores and stuff. And I think the record there is a little more mixed, right? So uh, what, you know, I guess, um, do you foresee this becoming a major case that goes perhaps up to the Supreme Court? Or do you think this is going to be settled where it is now in the district level? I think that's going to depend from a procedural uh aspect as to where where the case goes um you know there's certainly questions as to when that order expires are there claims alleged that would allow it to not be moot um you know like seeking nominal damages the supreme court is a way to say has said is a, a way to keep a, a case alive after that injury has in fact people passed um so it's going to be i think it's going to be questionable uh and it's going to be really questionable as to what the district court decides um if the district court, you know, finds that, OK, yes, the, the governor did, in fact, violate the, the Second Amendment in this context and you know, these people's rights, um, it could result in the district court just issuing an opinion. And if the governor's office looks at it and says, you know what, and the defendants more broadly go, you know what, we're just not going to challenge that. We're not going to raise it on appeal. It dies at the district court. Um and it's going to be a question, I think, really, of what the district court decides and then what the party found against decides to do. So it's hard It's hard for me to, to predict. And I think this one's less clear cut than if you took, say, you know, a state that passed an assault weapons ban. Where, like, they clearly want their assault weapons ban to, to stand and they're going to appeal that, um, you know, up at, at least maybe to the circuit court. I don't know if they'd be too keen on that going to SCOTUS at this point.